So project today is we're going to be turning this vertical shaft lawnmower engine into a horizontal shaft engine. Um, I didn't show the initial taking the covers off. Figure you can figure that out. Right now the oil is draining. It's probably all drained by now. Um, you can see I've already messed with this one. It's <laughs> spaced up from the deck a little bit, but uh, I think turning this into a horizontal shaft engine is going to work out a little bit better than my original plan. So yay internet for showing me that this was possible. So I'll see if I can take you along the ride somewhat and see if this works. Okay, so as you can see, I've got it torn down a little bit more, so there's no carburetor or any mounting bracket there. Took the muffler off, um, the little oil filler, flywheel, the uh, blade mounting thing. Everything is off, pretty much. I guess there's still this little shroud here. I guess I could take that off. Um, but basically getting it prepped for a little bit of sandblasting. Um, so made this unit after a King of Random video. So this is his design for for that. Uh, so if you want to see how to make one of these, refer to that video, link in the description. Um, so we'll see how well this works. This will be just completed that a little bit earlier. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it works. I've already hit it with a little bit of compressed air to knock off some of the, the already loose stuff, but you can still see there's plenty of grunge. So I think I'll take that shroud off and then we'll see how well that little sand blaster works. Okay, so I have not tried actually sand blasting anything yet. I'm going to do a test piece. This is the governor lever off that engine. You can kind of see if it'll focus. There's a bit of buildup and stuff on there, so I figured this would be a good little test piece to see if what I'm wanting to accomplish is possible with a little homemade sandblaster here. That ain't bad. <laughs> I mean, I didn't do a perfect coverage, but man, that really ain't bad. I'll have to clean this up the rest of the way and show you the results. Well, I spent a couple more seconds, used the rest of the sand I had in the hopper on it, and you can, you can tell I didn't really get the sides terribly, terribly well, but that is pretty pretty fantastic man this thing does not want to focus I'm sorry guys here we'll hold it out in its focus range so there's a little bit of spots on here mostly from touching it again with the gloves but yeah I like that okay so here is starting to sandblast this thing
progress here. So as you can see, I've JB welded that hole down at the bottom of that bearing journal. Um, I've JB welded up the hole where the governor arm used to come out. Um, the other videos that I had seen, they just left it there, either cutting it off or just leaving it there. But it was easy enough to just take the little retainer clip off of this side, and then the whole thing just slid out that way. So I just JB welded up that hole. Um, put a 7 8 uh, freeze plug, or expansion plug, whatever you want to call it, in the hole where the oil fill slash check thing used to be. So I'll reinforce that with some uh, JB weld. Actually, in order to get that to fit, I had to dremel out this hole just a little bit. So I'm not sure if I got it perfectly round, so I don't. I wouldn't trust that to seal. So I'll seal that up with some JB weld as well. Um, there was a hole up here that would allow oil to go up into this passage and go down into the valve spring area because um, the engine would be sitting like this so it would get splashed up in there sort of trickle down in this channel and dribble out through this hole which is now full of JB Weld um, so I JB welded those because this, this passage is superfluous it's not going to be used anymore so block those off there's a cover that went over here um, I'll still put the cover back on just in case the JB weld fails, I don't want to have oil leaking out there. Um, my thoughts now, since the crankshaft will be in here rotating and splashing up, if we could get a hole drilled up here, that would allow some oil to come in here to lubricate at least the, the tappets. I'm not sure how much we'd actually get up into the valve guides themselves up in here. Um, I've got some uh, what's it called? Graphite lube, the slip plate that actually goes on wet and then dries so that it adheres and and bonds with the metal. I'm gonna try putting that down in the in the valve guides as well as on the valve stems themselves so that way there's some sort of lubrication in there, um, they people actually use that slip plate stuff to paint on uh, exhaust manifolds, like for you know old Chevy V8s and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm not really worried about the heat. Um, so I figure that'll at least be something to to keep friction down a little bit. But I'm gonna see if I can drill some sort of hole right here at the bottom. Don't want to go too far on that little diagonal because that's right where the uh, the cylinder is which I just honed out the cylinder, just figured it, well I had this apart, honed out the cylinder, cleaned up where the, the valves went, cleaned up the valves, since you got it apart this far, why not? So I still have yet to attend to the other half of the crankcase where the sort of matching bearing journals on the other side, uh, they recommend a couple modifications, cutting a new channel and JB welding up the other ones, so I uh, still have yet to do that, but just want to give you a quick update. I know this is going to be edited as part of one video, but you know, that kind of stuff. Anyway, yeah, more to come. Okay, just about to throw the valves back in, got the stems treated with this slip plate graphite lubricant. So I've got those treated and down there, I know you're not really going to be able to see it, but I treated both of the valve guides with it. Um, so you can might be able to see there's a bit of discoloring in there from the graphite. Uh, one small note while we're here, you can see right there in the middle there is a new hole that I drilled. You can see my finger kind of waving back there behind it. There you go, now, it's, now it focuses. So again, I drilled that hole so that way as the as it's rotating and splashing up there, hopefully some will splash up into that that hole and uh, provide a little bit of lubrication up there to the valve springs anyway. So uh, yeah, so I've got that hole plugged, that hole plugged, 
this hole plugged, that hole plugged, um, that hole drilled, back up here, that hole plugged, and that hole is drilled. That should be, should be about it. Start putting it all together. I'll show you another shot once I get it back together to a, to a point here. Okay, so getting it all put back together now. So we've got camshaft, crankshaft gears with the little timing mark meeting up. Um, you can see my little splasher here. I actually just made that out of the uh, governor arm. So the arm that was attached to the other end of this rod going through this hole. Um, cut that and bent that up, drilled a hole in it. And that I think will, will work really well. Um, had to sort of taper the end of this, uh, grind a little bit off so that it would clear both this hump and the inside of the counterweight on the uh, crankshaft. So we're good there. Um, on this side, I've just added a hole right there or a notch so that oil can flow down and then lubricate this surface. Um, and then JB welded this one. Let's see if it'll focus here. Maybe without my finger there. Eh, a little better. So I actually used a thin sheet of plastic uh, wrapped around in there to kind of continue that curve there as sort of a mold over there and then you can kind of see I just sort of cut off the top to continue that bevel around so but that that works pretty well my glove is all ripping uh, um, yep gasket surfaces are cleaned up so those are ready for some either RTV or anaerobic sealer I haven't decided which one I'm gonna use yet but either way it'll be sealed um, uh, oh that's right, I was going to mention, so in both of the other videos that I watched by um, Bo the Mechanic and uh, I'm going to have to, I don't remember the name of the other one, the links are going to be in the description of both of those videos that I used as uh, inspiration for this project, but neither of them mentioned where they were going to do for an oil fill slash check hole, so since this one is no longer going to be functional obviously. Um, over here, this is the inside of the drain plug, and that's actually not far off from where you'd want the level of the oil to be, sort of looking at it, because it'd be to the bottom of that hole, which would be, now seeing it here, let's see, actually, let's rotate the engine so that the crankshaft is at the bottom of its stroke. So you can kind of see that the the oil would come to about right there, bottom of that hole. So this would be this would be mostly down in it. So it would create a lot of splashing. Um, so I I was originally thinking of you know using that to fill it up, just sort of tilting the motor at an angle a little bit, so I can fill it up to a little bit, just a little bit above that. But I think that might be close enough. So that'll be your fill and change hole, so fill and drain out of there. So you'll have to turn the whole motor sideways, kind of like a Honda, which, I mean, Honda does it, so no big deal, right? Um, but yeah, I think those are those are about it. Um, I somewhat ditched the the graphite down the the valve holes idea. Um, at least the way I had done it, where I treated the valve stems and the holes first, and let the let the stuff dry, it was. So, yeah, uh, I think we're about ready to put it all back together and see if it starts up. Okay, so got everything back together. It's full of oil. I decided to go with the anaerobic sealer, not that it really matters on the the crankcase. Um, I one thing I had to do that didn't show you doing uh, or didn't show me doing was the bracket for the carburetor. You had to mount the carburetor sideways from what it used to be so that it, the bowl is in the correct orientation. 
Um, this is still the same bracket that was used to mount it before, um, just with most of the stuff cut off and um, just the one bolt hole here had to drill a hole in here um, and it actually mounts pretty solid with just that one bolt and then going over the tube so I think I think we'll we'll be okay there uh, and it actually using that configuration it clears the side of this shroud just barely actually I think that screw is touching right right there uh, but not really impeding it at all and this little notch out here looks like it was designed just for that. It just it got a little bit of clearance between the bowl and that. It's just a a beautiful thing. So the um, reason I was okay with cutting up this whole bracket, I'm gonna have a different cable to run this. Oh, I did have to uh, I did have to kind of sand down the back of this this lever here, the throttle lever. And it, it still rubs on this bracket just a little bit, but not so much that it actually stops. It was actually you know, stopping it before so it wouldn't really be able to be run with the cable very easily. So got that uh, got that going. Um, I drilled out the rivets on the pull rope recoil. So, because that was mounted this way where the, the rope was going to be down. So this way you can re-clock it to, you know, to this way or this way so that the string is up. Or you can leave it off if you prefer to use the drill method. And go in there and you can spin it over and knock it over, you know, whatever. Um, this little switch hanging out here is my kill switch, kill run. So uh, it runs when the switch is in the off position, and then when it's on, it grounds. So this is coming off the coil, and it just grounds out over here. Just have a little screw, screw down in there. So that way I can have this mounted out to a, a panel next to where I've got the throttle cable. We're going to have the th throttle cable, don't have it there yet. Um, but yeah, when you turn the switch so that it's in the on position, um, it grounds out the coil and kills the kills the spark. So that is that is what that is. Little explanation there. Um, the air box should mount up to that just fine. Um, you'll have to I'll have to get some hose to bring the the breather tube around. Because it'll have to come out to the other side of the carburetor and out to the air box there. But that shouldn't be too big of a deal. And, um, yeah. That's that's where we are so far. Um, I tried starting it a little bit earlier just with some starter fluid in there. And wasn't really liking life there. Uh, the timing's on, so I have a little bit of uh, investigating to do there. May try a new plug. It's an older plug, but it it still sparks just fine. So I'll have to see what's going on there. But uh, yeah, that's all for now. Okay. Switch this to on. <laughs> Look at all that. You can see where I had it running a little bit earlier. Look at all that oil puking out of the crankcase. I'm thinking that hole that I drilled in the valve cover or valve uh, valve spring compartment was maybe a little bit too big. 
Um, that and then compression is kind of low on this this engine. By kind of low, I mean 40 psi. Uh, so pretty low. <laughs> so it could be a lot of blow by getting past the rings and causing that to uh, that to sort of help some oil on its way out of the crankcase. So. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. As you can see, the um, air box, air filter housing, whatever you want to call it, um, did bolt onto the carburetor just fine. Um, so that's that's nothing to worry about converting it to this setup. Um, the gas tank, I don't know if it was already leaking or if it was from when I cut it, but. Right, right along in this seam here, it seems like it's leaking somewhere. So I'm gonna have to JB weld that up. Um, as you can see, my little fuel tank solution, just take a piece of the deck <laughs> and bend it and drill it and it works. For now, anyway. Um, yeah. So, that is more or less how to convert this style of Briggs engine into a horizontal shaft and then you can do other things with it like a go-kart or something else but yeah I've got a specific project in mind for this uh, which you'll see coming up here so stay tuned for that as well as other videos so yeah bye for now okay just kidding um, I did end up pulling the muffler off to access this cover and you can see I filled in that hole I drilled with uh, some more JB weld that's just fresh it's still still setting it's it still goes through that little top part um, so hopefully that'll you know reduce the amount of uh, oil it's puking out the the breather which that's the breather tube right there on the back side of this cover if you're not familiar with these um, it goes in there's a little bit of a filter or a baffle it goes through this and gets channeled out through this hole which meets up with that hole which then there's a tube running across the other side of the, van the engine coming out right here and that's what we were seeing puking out earlier. So, hopefully that will help with that. Figured while I had the gas tank and stuff off waiting for the JB weld to cure anyway, might as well just dig in and see if we can adjust that. So, yeah. Hopefully that will uh, solve that somewhat. Okay. Now bye. <laughs>